This is Dr. Catherine Dow reporting for Room Now. I'm at the ACR 2020 Convergence Conference. And there's this one study that has been on everybody's mind, and it's been all over Twitter if you haven't been following Twitter. So this is abstract 0431. It's looking at hydroxychloroquine and whether or not QT intervals are elevated because of the drug. So this study was um, done looking at three different cohorts. It's actually two cohorts of rheumatoid arthritis, which were perspective, um, one cohort of lupus, and which is a retrospective study. And what they did was they evaluated 681 lupus and RA patients. So there were 307 rheumatoid arthritis patients, 374 lupus patients, and they performed EKGs as part of the standard of care. They excluded patients who had clinical cardiovascular disease. And what they wanted to do was measure the QTC length and whether or not there was correlation in terms of hydroxychloroquine use. So what they did find was that um, out of the entire lupus and RA cohort, 54% were hydroxychloroquine users and 44% had QTC greater than 440 milliseconds. The average length of QTC was 437 millisecond. In the multivariate logistic modeling, hydroxychloroquine use, the authors concluded, was not a significant predictor of prolonged QTC greater than 450 or greater than 500 millisecond for the entire cohort. Now, there were um, about eight out of 11, I'm sorry, nine out of 11 lupus patients who had QTC intervals greater than 500 milliseconds that were on hydroxychloroquine. Um, but they did not have any significant increased um, percentages of arrhythmias or deaths. What the author also had mentioned um, during her speech, this is Dr. Elizabeth Park, was that QTC prolongation can occur, but it's more likely when used in combination with muscle relaxants and antidepressants, but there were no arrhythmias. Even though you're detecting this change, there were no clinically significant event. The other things that predicted QTC length was age, steroid use, and smoking. And then they also found that with lupus patients only, um, hydroxychloroquine did have a drug-to-drug -drug interaction when combined with antipsychotics. So that's a p-score of 0.014. So this study is actually very interesting because I don't know about you, but I've been getting a lot of calls from the pharmacist that says, are you sure you wanna prescribe hydroxychloroquine because they're on um, citalopram or they're on um, duloxetine or they're on tizanidine, right? So it begs the question, should we be doing baseline EKGs on everybody, but none of these are clinically significant events? Um, or is the pharmacist overcalling it? I think that this um, warning has been like overblown, in my opinion, uh, because of COVID-19, where patients were really sick, were given mega doses of hydroxychloroquine in combination with uh, proarrhythmic drugs, drugs known to cause prolonged QTC, um, like azithromycin or levoquin, or a combination of factors. In addition, patients with COVID-19 may also have cardiovascular compromise to begin with. But in our regular lupus patient, rheumatoid arthritis patients, or other autoimmune diseases, um, I really think that we can go ahead and continue to prescribe hydroxychloroquine safely, particularly with the dose that we use, without having to get um, EKGs regularly on these patients just because another doctor added another medicine. So food for thought. Um, let me know if you have a difference in opinion. I'd love to hear it. My Twitter account is at KDAO2011. Thank you.